morning, everyone, and welcome to Long Weekly Coffee Break. My name is Ryan Nedbalski. Uh, today we'll be discussing commercial style fire suppression for residential grade applications. Joining me today is Jessica Pomzak with Denlar. Uh, welcome, Jessica. Thank you for coming, joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here today. Great to have you. Um, hopefully you can help us understand the need for co commercial fire suppression and uh, when designing a residential application. Absolutely. Um, the first thing to know is that we're all probably been affected by a cooking fire. Um, do you actually know anybody who's been affected by a cooking fire? Fortunately, I have not personally, but I have heard some stories from other people around the world. From going to trade shows and various industry events, I've come across countless individuals who've told me that they wish they had a range hood like what we offer um, to protect either their spouse, their kids, um, themselves, or even a local firehouse, um, which is really no surprise considering that cooking fires are the cause of over 50% of kitchen fires, of residential fires rather. Um, chances are we all may have no, know somebody who's been affected and they just don't want to admit to it to us because they're embarrassed. So from a design perspective, where have you seen a need for fire suppression? To be honest, the opportunities are almost endless, but I feel our biggest opportunity growth is in colleges. In fact, 87% of all fires reported at colleges are caused by cooking fires you can see here with over 40% of civilian injuries being due to cooking equipment and about 7% of direct property damage as well. So what products are available for us to help mitigate the fire risk when we are looking at a cooking application? Yeah, so there's actually a specific product category specifically for protecting a residential range. It's known as 300A. So here I have a diagram of a full commercial hood because this is what you're probably more familiar with already. Um, it's what you're going to see in a cafeteria or a restaurant kitchen. And it's going to be able to protect any type of cooking device. Here you see multiple appliances. There's a deep fryer, there's a griddle, there's a grill, and there's an oven. You also see there's a pipe system, there's a manual pull station, uh, there is an interlock to shut off power to the cooking devices if there was a fire event, and there's a fire extinguisher located close by. Um, so it's easiest to really think of 300A as a subset of UL 300. The biggest difference uh, for 300A is it's limited to protecting a domestic stove. So what are the requirements for 300, UL 300A? Yeah, so here I have um, UL 300A is something that UL put forth an investigation specific to residential range top cooking surfaces and they put forth a bunch of requirements in order to be approved as a UL 300A device. Um, so this is a snapshot of those requirements. You have to have the hood, 300A device rather, installed per manufacturer specifications. You have to have an ambient temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You cannot have a draft. You have to have a four burner stove when you're testing and you can't have a fan on. Um, and what you're doing is you're actually taking uh, fryer pans, pots, multiple test vessels and you're lighting cooking oil on fire. Um, so it's actually a pretty scary process because you have to watch this fire grow and grow until the system decides it's ready to discharge to put out that fire. And your gut reaction is to run in there with either a fire extinguisher Pull that pole station or call the fire department, right? But we can't do that. <laughs> so what does Denlar have available that's going to be able to help us design this type of application? Yeah, so Denlar, we try to focus on being the expert in our unique portion of the market. Um, so the first product that we have tailored to the UHL 300A is our flagship model, the D1000. Um, it's available to protect both a 30 and a 36 inch residential range, and it uses a fail safe actuation method, which means that it's a fully mechanical actuation. Um, it uses a fully integrated fire suppression system, and it has stages of pre suppression and environment environmental monitoring built in, which basically means that it's going to help pre try to prevent that fire from actually occurring, and it's also monitoring to make sure that the hood's going to be able to put out that fire properly. 
Um, so a little bit more about the D1000. It was originally launched in 2007, and it's actually the basis of design behind the NFPA 101 Life Safety Code, which was introduced in 2012. That complete system is recognized by the ICC with a PMG listing. It's PMG 1122 is the number. And the D1000 um, complies with the various um, codes. So it complies with NSF, NFPA, the International Mechanical Code, Uniform Mechanical Code, and International Fire Codes. Um, it's available in multiple ducted options. So we have a recirculating, a rear discharging, and a top discharging options. And it's going to have three fusible links, including one in the plenum, and then four or five nozzles, depending on the length of the range hood itself, including the one in the plenum. So the reason for the nozzle and the link in the plenum is it's actually trying to address any potential fires in that duct run and prevent them from occurring. It also has multiple alarm outputs. So it has a hard alarm output and a alarm output at the PLC, which is electronic, so they can tie into an alarm system. Um, the D1000 is also available with multiple options. So I mentioned NFPA 101 briefly. Um, so it's known as the life safety code and it's predominantly used in residential health care. In order to be compliant with that, you have to have a few things. You have to have a 300A fully integrated suppression system. You have to have a manual pulse station, 120 minute interlock, which our answer to that is the clock box, which we'll talk about more in a minute. And you have to have um, a minimum of 500 CFM. So we package all of that into our NFPA 101 upgrade. We also have things like a limiting speed control available, which will allow you to maximize what the output CFM is going to be. So you can limit it to 400 CFM to remove the need for a makeup air system. We also have the ability to tie into said makeup air system if one's needed and the ability to even tie in with a third party fan if for some reason the fans we offer will not work for that specific project. Um, and we provide a standard three year product warranty. Then we have our designer series unit. This is a scaled down unit um, and it's actually designed only to protect a 30 inch range currently. It's still a fail safe actuation system and it's using, again, a fully integrated suppression system, and it has to come standard with a fire alarm connection. This connection is a hard alarm connection on the designer. And the designer was introduced in 2010. Um, the big things, big takeaways are the fully mechanical system. It's available with a recirculating and a top discharging fan option. It has two glass and Job fusible links, two discharge nozzles, and one alarm output. So you might be looking at this and going, there's only two nozzles. How's that protecting a whole 30 inch range? It's a 60 degree conical spray. So what that means is the spray is actually going to get wider the closer it gets to the range itself. So it's going to be able to adequately cover that and put out the fire. Similarly, it's the D1000. So that's available with a manual pull station, handicap accessible controls, clock box, and it comes standard with a two year product warranty. Um, the biggest difference between the two is the designer is more of a simplified version. Um, and that's where you'd really see some value engineering benefits as well with the designer. For the clock box, we have, it's a protect, password protected clicking element control. So it requires the user to enter a five digit password in order to unlock power to the range for 120 minutes. So this was part of what I mentioned in that NFPA 101 that I said I would talk about it more. So Jessica, where are you um, typically seeing applications where you're going to be using the clock box? Yeah, so aside from being able to use it with NFPA 101 compliance, you might see it being used in a memory carrier facility. Somebody might have a parent at home that they want to protect, um, you know, could have very, very early onset dementia or something similar. College, where you might want to have the RA have control over who can cook and when, so you don't have somebody coming in late at night trying to cook mac and cheese after they've been out partying all night. Or a home economic classroom where you have a teacher who wants to be able to um, control when the student can turn on power to the stove and when so they don't have a student playing with the stove or forgetting to leave it on all night. Yeah. Uh, so with all these different products that we've looked at, how does Denmark go about providing a safe cooking application overall? 
Yeah, so I think the best place to start with that is understanding how the system works itself. So I'm gonna start with the D1000 because it kind of sets apart a little bit with the, from the designer with its stages of pre-suppression. Um, as two temperature switches. The first one is actually going to be activated at 150 degrees. It's going to turn a fan onto high and the fan's going to remain there until the temperature has gone down below 150 degrees for a period of three minutes. The second temperature switch is activated at 190 degrees. When this temperature switch is activated, the fan's again turning onto high and the reason it does it again is in case there was a rapid flare up of heat and it didn't have time to do it the first time. Um, so it's turning that fan onto high. Again, going to remain on for three minutes after the temperature falls back below 150 degrees. But it's also this time going to shut off power to the range. You can see in this diagram that there's actually, it says electrical disconnect and there's a picture of a gas valve there. So it's actually tying in with the power source to the range hood, to the range itself rather, to shut off power if there was any heat, heat building. And it's also going to sound an audible alarm. So it's allowing the user to know that there's an issue because 190 degrees, you have a lot of heat and a fire is more than likely imminent at this point. From there, the designer and D1000 are gonna function almost identically. They are going to work to, um, the like, the, sorry, the fusible links are actually going to break um, and it's causing the suppression assembly to release its tension and the system's going to discharge, putting out that fire, it's going to send a signal to again shut down power to the range in case somebody manually discharges the system or in case again there was a rapid flash fire. It's also going to send an alarm if you're tied, signal to that alarm you're tied into if you choose to and sound an internal audible alarm. So lots of things going on all at the same time there. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward. Um, so from a contractor's point of view, how easy is it to install? Yeah, so it's actually designed to be very simple to install. And this diagram actually is a new one that hasn't been introduced yet. Um, but it shows how you have site power to the hood itself. You have site power to your fuel source for the range itself. Um, and then this shows the clock box tied in. So you're gonna have some electrical run You'll have some plumbing if you have a gas stove being used, and you'll have HVAC involved if you're running a duct. Um, other than that, the only other contractors you might need is a fire suppression contractor if a test is required. But because the suppression itself is pre-engineered and fully integrated, there isn't actually any interaction with that suppression system when you're installing the hood. So it's very similar to installing a standard range hood that you would see in a stove, kitchen and even at your own home. Yeah, absolutely. So, Denler applications are certainly not limited to residential use. I know I keep on saying a residential range. Um, so, in order to be used in the 300A category, you have to be used over a residential range, but it's not limited to a residential space actually designed for specifically for use in a limited commercial space. So places like a church, daycare, break room, a firehouse, police station, um, and these are just examples, occupational therapy, long-term stay hotels, anywhere where you have a commercial space and there could be added protection. And think of places like that long-term stay hotel. If they had a fire and had to evacuate that hotel, they're going to be out a ton of money by the time they restore that building and have occupancy again compared to what it would cost them to install a Dunlar hood. So there's some huge advantages to installing 300A as well. Yeah, um, so those so safety benefits, if you want to summarize them, we're looking at stages of pre-suppression with the V1000. We are controlling the amount of time somebody can cook and who can cook with the clock box. And both the designer series and the D1000 have a fully mechanical actuation. This is key because there's no electricity needed for the actuation itself to suppress that fire initially. So this is an example of a quote that we have from a fire marshal. I brought this today because I thought this is extremely important to get somebody else's viewpoint. Um, so this fire marshal is at the University of Oklahoma. He is also the president of the Campus Fire Safety Forum. 
So he, that Campus Fire Safety Forum is a group of people who are responsible for keeping their colleges safe. There's a few hundred colleges that are represented in this Campus Fire Safety Forum. So it's a pretty fluid organization. Um, so he said that I can say that I've been impressed with the product. The commissioning of the 13 hoods we recently installed in our new residence hall was a piece of cake. The system appears to be easy to test and inspect also. I would give the uh, outside perspective on a product that you know you're trying to display to everybody on the call. So that's awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Can certainly speak from far more than me talking to on Bloom in the Face about Denlar, seeing somebody else's viewpoint. Um, and I just have a few advantages to the D1000 I really want to point out. Um, the fail safe actuation is the first one. This is a big distinction between our hoods and other products in the 300A category. We are the only product in the 300A category that has a fail safe actuation. So again, that means that it's a fully mechanical actuation. We don't require electricity to suppress that fire itself. It's very important and it creates a fail safe thing. So you don't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna work. Whereas other systems may use electricity solely or rely on a battery backup, which nine volt battery backup, you be the judge. Um, the next thing is the fixed nozzle positioning. This is important. It really removes the ability to some, for somebody to install the nozzles incorrectly. So having that fully self-contained, pre-engineered system, you know that the positioning is gonna be right because it was pre-tested that, with that positioning for its use. And the next thing that really sets us apart is our three-year product warranty for the D1000. The product warranty and other 300A products is about one year. So both the designer and our D1000 are surpassing that. Awesome. Um, thank you so, so much for, you know, helping us understand a little bit better about uh, fire suppression and residential applications. I want to thank everybody on the call for joining us. I want to thank Jessica for taking the time to help us out. Um, next week, we will be joined by Andy Carter and Steve Blackman with U.S. Draft discussing stairwell press pressurization and monitoring with LS Business. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Thanks again, Justin. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the time.